if you really are willing to not give up and just keep going and keep going, anything's possible. Instead of the baseball and the soccer like other kids, I raced dirt bikes. I was you know, never the most talented, so it took a lot of work ethic. And I learned that really early on. Motocross, it kind of makes you uh, grow up quicker. It is a young man's sport, so by the time you're 17 years old, most kids, like, you're just still trying to have fun in high school. And by that time, I'm already like traveling the country and moving out on my own to live out my dreams. By the time I was four, my parents got me my first motorcycle that sat in the living room for a couple years, and I played on it like it was a toy and quickly, you know, got me on two wheels with some training wheels. And, uh, and everything revolved around wanting to be this professional motocross racer. I was completely just obsessed with riding a dirt bike, being in the garage, working on it with my dad, going to the track. It's like, it's all I thought about. One moment I'm living out my, you know, childhood dreams and they're all coming to kind of fruition. And then, and then um, the second race of the day, chaotic and there's racers and stuff going everywhere. And there was a, a jump where the rider in front of me crashed off this jump. In those moments, you know, you learn, you grab a handful of gas and sometimes you ride it out and other times you crash, but normally you got up. It was a blur. I was laying there. There was a lot going on kind of a chaotic scene where, you know, you could hear a lot of commotion. And before I know it, I was in the hospital and you're sedated and there's a lot going on and um, you're, not, you're not able to speak and you got tubes down your mouth, bolts in your head, a halo to inserted because of a, the surgery they had to do to fuse your you know, spinal cord. And then you're trying to learn at the time of like, okay, is this fixable? Like, is this like, a, what is this injury? quickly you learn like spinal cord injuries don't work like that. I was on a ventilator and having to, you know, have my lungs suctioned out and it gets kind of dark, that's for sure. It got dark quick and it's a battle to uh, try to accept and then also at the same time learn how to deal with this injury. How hard he's worked just in regular life and now getting put onto this, to see somebody in such a struggle, to live in everyday life and, and to see how he puts it together is pretty amazing. He's up against something a lot different than racing a motorcycle now, and I think it shows how powerful the guy is even being in this position. I would like to see, obviously, science research to come out to where he would have a chance to see light at the end of the tunnel. The amount of pain sometimes that I'm up against 24 hours a day, waking up every couple hours, be having to ask for help for everything. It's hard, it's truthfully hard. Obviously with the progression of studies going on, stuff like what Wings for Life is doing, do I have hope that one day it can result in uh, your left arm working like your right arm does? That might mean I could go drive a van or something, you know? It could mean I could get myself in and out of a wheelchair on my own. Life without paralysis would be just taking that everyday scare and worry out of the equation. Thankfully, I've been able to kind of be not willing to throw in the towel and, okay, let's keep charging at this and got me to where I am now. I'm just a big believer and I'm like, I'm always trying to set that next mark ahead and like that comes with having hope. What would life be like without a spot? life would be without limitations. My name is Donovan Mitchell, paralyzed for 23 years, and I'm a Wings for Life ambassador. <laughs>